Do I really have to eat corned beef hash from a can? Come join us by the campfire. Hang, Hang on, on for the loop. Three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. I think this fire's fake. Well, I can't blame a guy for trying. This month, we've been learning survival skills to help us survive in the wild. And we've been learning some skills that help us in our daily walk with God. We've also been competing in the Loop Show Survival Game. <laughs> now, what we've been doing is we've been competing in different games, and the winner of each game got to choose one good treat from the picnic table of doom to put in their backpack, and one not so good treat for the loser's backpack. Jamie won one challenge, I won the other two. So now we're going to eat those things that are in our bags. Are you ready to eat what's in your bag, Ricky? I'd rather eat this cold marshmallow, but let's, let's go for it. All right, the first thing that I got to eat after winning the compass challenge, the moon pie. Oop. And if you've never had a moon pie, it's chocolate, marshmallow, and graham crackers. Graham for short. You're on a first name basis with yes. it. <laughs> okay, we ready? Mission mm -hmm. control. It's really good. We have liftoff. Wow. <laughs> and if you've never had corned beef hash before, neither have I. So we're gonna experience this together. All right. Ooh, I think I can smell it. All Blech. right. All right. Oh. This looks like vomit. I hate huh. so many things right now. Um, I thought maybe. I all right. Well, we're just gonna go ahead and dig into this. You can hear it squishing. Okay. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. He's doing the only teeth technique. Did it help? Uh-uh. Oh, I think it's going in the trash. Once you start to actually chew it, it reminds me of this one time Mm -hmm. When I was at summer camp, uh -huh. and I saw a kid throw up uh -huh. everywhere. Uh -huh. there wow. We go. I'm impressed. There, there we go. Yes, everybody give him a round of applause. That was impressive. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Loop Show. <laughs> you know, it would be better than that. What? Not eating this ever. At all. What is fire? What makes things burn? In this film, we're going to study fire, what it is and what it does. We know some things about fire already. Fire gives us heat. It cooks our food and sometimes provides us with light. Fire does a great many things that are useful to man. But fire can also be dangerous. Because fire can be dangerous, we'll study it in a laboratory where we can experiment safely. What do we need to make a fire? Let's try to find out. So fires need three things to burn, and one of those things is oxygen. Now, what's interesting is that there are some times where it can feel like our faith is burning bright, like this candle. And then something comes along, whether it's a thing that we didn't expect at school with a friend who does something that hurts us. Maybe it's a question that somebody's asking that we don't actually know the answer to. Maybe it's a verse in the Bible that just doesn't make sense. It's something like that that comes along and it takes away the oxygen and the fire stops burning. What happens is your faith goes out, just like this fire. And I think it can be easy to freak out and try to figure out what do I do now? But what I, what I hope you realize is that you can ask questions. That questioning can actually bring oxygen to reignite that fire. You have permission to ask because God is bigger than your questions. And this isn't just something I'm making up because I like the way that it sounds. This is actually something that James, the brother of Jesus said. He wrote this letter to the church in the New Testament in our Bibles. Uh, it's called James, named after Jesus' brother. And in chapter one, verse five, this is what James says to us. He says that if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. He's telling us that we have permission to ask. Then he says that God will give it to you. 
He won't rebuke you for asking. Now, what does rebuke mean? It's basically a word that means getting onto you when you do something wrong. So we've all messed up, we've done something that we weren't supposed to, and we had somebody who got onto us for it that said, hey, don't do that again. It wasn't good, it wasn't smart, don't do that. Here's what God won't do. He won't rebuke you for asking questions. What God will do is give you wisdom. Questioning will bring oxygen because God's wisdom is the oxygen that your faith needs to burn bright. But that's not all a fire needs. It also needs- Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's hold on there for a second. I'm the internet, but you can call me Webbles. <laughs> I'm rarely the voice of reason around here, but before we go make giving you all the secrets for how to make fires, I just want to reiterate something. Fire is dangerous. You do not have permission to go starting fires every which way you want to. We're getting all scientific and making some metaphors. You do have permission to ask questions. You do not have permission to start fires. Yes questions, no fires. Got it? Just want to make sure we got that crystal clear. Um, okay, I guess, uh, let's rewind a little bit and, um, yeah, that's a good spot. Unpause! But that's not all a fire needs. It also needs fuel, just like this candle. Otherwise, it's not going to burn. And the thing about fuel is it's not always just going to show up or fall into your lap. You're going to have to seek it out. You're going to have to be active in order to find the fuel that you need. So let's check this out. What's up, Judo Bob here? And again, this is not your normal infomercial material. This time we're selling persistence and persistence to hunt. Some of you might ask, what is persistence? And that's a great question because I used to think, oh, persistence. Well, I'm not an assistant and I don't like purses. And does it have to do with my sister? Because I'm not a big fan of my sister. You know, by the way, Tiffany, sis, I love you. Don't, uh, don't kick me. Here's the thing that Judo Bob likes to do when he doesn't know a word he knows, he goes to the dictionary. And the dictionary definition of persistence is firm or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Whoa. You know, I, let's, let's simplify it for those, you know, that might not know what that means. It basically means stick to it. You might even say persist, stick to it. And I know that's kind of a mouthful too, but you know, if you have a mouthful of ice cream, that's not a bad thing, right? Here's the thing, you guys, we can't passively wait for our questions to be answered. We have to seek out those answers like a hunter. And who doesn't want to be a hunter? You see these bad boys? Oh, made for hunting. Might as well be a fork and a knife. That's how I eat. It's the same thing if I want to crack a board, I don't just wait for the board to come to me. I actually seek out a board and I snap it. And you know Judo Bob knows how to snap some boards, okay? Thunder, lightning, you don't want this storm. That is persistent-ness. Mouthful, I know, but sometimes, you know, a mouthful of ice cream is awesome, even though you get a brain freeze. I hope you didn't get a brain freeze, but if you did and you want a recap of the lesson, numbers below, talk to my receptionist or my assistant or my persistent, which is what I sometimes call her. Judo Bob is proud of you for already uh, being persistent to hunt and persist stick to it. And uh, come to my dojo sometime, we'd love to see you. It's time to Vegemite. Yeah. And time for some shrimp chips. Well. Hopefully this will be a nice little palate cleanser. So apparently people in Australia put this on their toast. Uh, like for breakfast in the morning and eat it. <gasps> it is yeast extract. Mm. Yes, it is Sounds. actually very nutritional. Nutrition-y? Nutritionite. Um, ah, it's very nutritionite for you. Uh, so, yep, here we go. And I wanted to try to get the same amount as you got. Oh gosh, I don't know if I can eat that much. That is too much. I was trying to get the same amount that you got on you your- You can do whatever you want. Was it about, was it about this much? That looks about right. You can tell me right. the truth. I mean, yeah. So I'm gonna try it. I'm not gonna eat this whole thing in one bite because I might like throw up. So I'm just gonna do a little bit. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> the Play-Doh. This tastes like the Play-Doh. This place, is it really salty? There's so much salt in this. Oh my goodness. It like burned my tongue. It's, okay, maybe I'll, I'm gonna get it in my teeth Oof. if I do the Ricky method. Oof. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> I am so sorry. Uh, so bad. <laughs> oh, man. Well, while you do that, let me try some of these shrimp chips. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> you got yeah. 
that. Yeah, listen, this is all on me. <laughs> I don't that. know what I was expecting. It just <laughs> smells like a big old bag of shrimp. Okay, let's try this. Surprisingly not bad. The smell of the bag is way worse than what the actual chips taste like. Some more. Mmm. You want to try? No. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Ah, that's so gross! That's the worst thing I've ever tasted on The Loop Show. That's worse than the Play-Doh, I think. Treat number three. I have alligator beef stick. I have Larvette's <laughs> original worm snacks with an X. Now, what are the ingredients in yours? You have a cheddar flavor oh, one. Oh, yes. Ingredients. Insect larva. Mmm. Well, mine says alligator beef flavorings. Smells pretty good. It just tastes like regular jerky. It's just good as is. You want? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to spoil your appetite. I get it. Yeah. Go for it. Okay, here we go. Larvette's original worm snacks with an X. Mm, it smells like an insect bag. They still have their little legs and their Don't, little faces. Jamie, how have you not learned your lesson? Oh my gosh. Don't look at it. Talk me through it. What's happening? Uh, I just freaked out. <laughs> oh my gosh. It feels okay. like a worm in my hand. <laughs> Eat it really fast. That's what I did. That's what I did. Yep, it's gone. You did it! I did it. I just ate his butt. Oh my gosh, I'm just exhausted. The beef jerky was good. Mm -hmm. The shrimp chips were surprisingly good, but still taste the corned beef hash. So let's send it over to James and... Um, let's go brush our teeth. So fire needs oxygen, it needs fuel, and it needs heat. And heat can be generated through friction, just like this. Can you feel the heat? That was hot. <laughs> uh, here's what's interesting, is the fact that God created our lives to involve mystery, to involve challenges, to require questions. And what I hope as we've been learning this together that you've realized that questioning is a valuable survival skill for us to live meaningful lives and to better understand who God is and what that means for us. It's interesting because questioning, we learned earlier, brings in oxygen but questioning also provides the friction that we need to create the heat that will sometimes reignite and strengthen our faith. Now, questioning is not for the faint of heart. It requires asking, it requires hunting, and it requires listening. It's not easy. It takes grit to keep grinding until a spark is ignited, but that's okay. Because even when the answers don't come easy or they don't come right away, you have the permission to ask. You have the persistence to hunt and you have the patience to listen. So when you have questions, ask God, help me with this. And thank God when he gives you an ember that will ignite the flame. How do you deal with questions in your journey with God? Ask, you have the permission. Hunt, you have the persistence. Listen, you have the patience. Just like it says in James, God has wisdom waiting for you. He wants to hear your questions and he wants to watch your faith burn brighter. Ugh. Ah. Ugh. Okay, I think I finally got the taste of corned beef hash out of my mouth. Ugh. I'm never gonna get the taste of Vegemite out of my mouth. Oof. So Ricky, what do you do whenever you're wrestling with a really tough question? Mm. Well, um, I wrestle with it. Um, I go back and forth and I, I ask trusted friends. I see uh, what I can do and kind of make it become a discipline to just really prey on it. Yeah, it's weird because sometimes whenever we don't have the answers to our questions, we can feel hopeless. I know that there's been times in my life where God has led me down a road or my path has gone one direction that I didn't see it going in. And I just felt really hopeless at the end of it. And I felt like, God, like, why did you leave me here? Why? And I would pray to God and I would ask him, what's going on? What's the purpose of this? Where am I supposed to go from here? And he seems silent. Um, but the important thing to remember is that maybe he's silent, but he's there and he's not gonna leave your side. Have faith that you 
are there for a reason and you have to wait until you do hear from the Lord. So that's one thing that I always hold on to is I remember that I'm not alone and that he's with me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> God gave us so many skills to survive everyday life. Yeah, skills like prayer, stillness, reading the Bible, questioning. Those are a couple that we learned this month. Yeah, and there are loads more disciplines that we can practice to grow closer to God. I feel like our survival skills got stronger too. Absolutely. Jamie, you have been a worthy opponent. You as well, sir. I had a ton of fun. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. Is it getting cold out here to you? Mickey, that's a TV. Yeah, but feel it's like radiating heat. It's oh, like, it is actually. Yeah. Huh. So if you are very confused as to why we had to eat all these weird things, uh, check out this playlist so you can watch all of the Luke Show survival games in order. This, I'm sure this is very confusing for you. And if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. What's corned beef hash taste like to you? Or how about those nasty little worms? <laughs>